Welcome to an introduction to accounting and to Sage Line 50. In this podcast, we're going to look at the addition of a new supplier and how to edit supplier details. First of all, from the menu on the left hand side here, we've taken the screen which it gives you details for suppliers. From this supplier process, you can see we enter purchase orders, place orders, update orders, and so on. Now, on the menu here, we have new supplier, edit supplier, and these are what we shall be looking at now. So we'll take new supplier, and we are going to put in the name of account, and the account reference. Now, the account references, you will have a policy for any particular company. The policy that I'm using is to take the first four letters and then to use 001, 002 and so on to identify suppliers. So this supplier has an address of 14 Hind Street on any town and we need a postcode BV66YY so I've entered the supplier's name and address and so next I want to give a telephone number and fill in the other details. Most useful one is probably a contact name. Uh, it may be necessary to put in VAT numbers and so on. We're not going to put in all the details. We'll go through next. Now this screen supplier's default is whether they give us discounts on particular items and of course it also tells us which nominal code our supplier is going to be associated with. In other words, what are our purchases for? So in this case purchases have been divided or subdivided into purchases of film, purchases of paper and so on and we'll say the supplier is a supplier of paper. So we have the nominal code of 5001 we check the tax code, they are VAT registered, we're VAT registered, we're going to be paying 20% there. We look at their credit details, right, this supplier is going to give us a credit limit of 2000, so we fill that in. They expect payment within 30 days, so that's why I'm going to put the 30 days. And they are offering a settlement discount of 2% if we pay within 7 days, within a week. Right, let's get that, that correct. So our terms are thir whoops, 30 days, 2% um, 7. And we must tick the terms agreed box, otherwise these will not operate as terms when we try to, pl uh, to place orders and so on. So we go to next. Now we can enter the supplier's bank details as well if these are relevant and their bank account details. If we're paying everything by fax or by direct transfer these would be useful but normally we would ignore these. Right, does the supplier already have an opening balance? No there isn't an opening balance or yes there is one. In this case it's a new supplier, completely new supplier so there is no opening balance to enter. If there was an opening balance, then we would enter it as a single value, um, as an invoice, or as individual transactions, if there's more than one invoice. But for us, there isn't an opening balance to enter, so we're just going to leave it at that. There's no opening balance to post, so we can now create the supplier's account. Now, supposing that we want to edit a supplier, go into the Edit Supplier, the records come up we need to select well let's say that they we have made a mistake with what I have in terms of the credit limits that they gave us uh, the credit limit that we put in was 2000 let's assume that it was an error on our part in putting it is actually only a thousand and so we have amended that we now need to save the amended record I'm going to close that and just to check if we look in the reports and look at the supplier details we have supplier address lists and supplier lists let's just look at the supplier address list and we'll take all the suppliers just magnify that on the screen and if we look right at the end there 
There we have the supplier who we've just entered. Why well, have 14 High Street, any town, BBC 66, why that Fred Toop is the contact, and that's our contact number. So let's close that one. So that then is how we would uh, enter details for a new supplier and also how we would edit the supplier. Thank you.